Vex High Stakes is the newest Vex game and has the most amount of strategies out of any in the past couple of years. Hello, I'm Luke, and I've seen thousands of Vex matches that you don't need to. Today, I'll break down what usually happens in a Vex High Stakes match, how they usually play out, and also how you can control the flow of the match, and most importantly, how you can turn the tides in your favor when your opponents have the upper hand. This is a complete guide to Vex High Stakes strategy as of October. And starting off, we're gonna start with the basics. I'm gonna go rapid fire here. Wall stakes control is not as important as top ring control. So don't get the, those terms confused. And then of course, corner control is super, super important, but I'll tell you guys later in the video of what to do if you guys don't have corner control. And also auto is also super, super important. So with that auto bonus is insanely overpowered right now. And I'll also tell you guys what to do if you guys don't win auto. So this is one of the matches from the Honey Epic competition. This is actually the finals match. And in this competition was insanely competitive with some of the best teams from China and across the world even going. In this tournament, we really got to see of all the pinnacles of robot design and also just how the strategies were, were being played out. As you can see here, the wall stakes weren't really being played a ton here, but whenever a team had the chance to, like 1852R here, they did not let that chance slide and they took that wall stake. And the same thing with happening on the other far, far end there with that Rugan team also fighting for the wall stake control. But as you can see here, in this match, blue took auto, so red here has to play it more aggressively, but they aren't doing that. So that is one of the first takeaways here that I've really had for most of the for so far throughout the season is that if you lose the auto, you need to play really aggressively. You need to make some big plays with the negative corners or just playing a lot of wall stakes to get those to get that 12 point differential back. And as you can see here, all four of these teams played great control of these corners well you can see here that blue and red both played super close to the corners but 1 5 2 r was a little bit less uh, a little bit more confident with how they're how fast they're gonna be able to get back so that they were able to you know leave the corner towards the end here and even score or even score a wall stake and next up i'll cover a match from the highlander summit this is the finals two of the Highlander Summit signature event. All three matches here, Red Alliance actually makes the same mistake. So the key takeaway from this signature event that I thought was that, you know, for your drive coach, drive coaches really need to pay attention to what mistakes your team or your alliance is making throughout the tournament, especially through Elums, right? Especially in a best of three, right? You have the chance in at least one round to pay attention to what mistakes were made and change your strategies because you have like around five to 10 minutes between each match. So you have a lot of time. So right after a match is over, even before the points are scored, what I would do is I would start talking with your teammates, your alliance, and start deciding on the next match's strategy. As you can hear, see here, this is a pretty standard match after Blue Alliance stole Red's first goal. Both teams are in control of a positive corner. And Red really tries to take control of the height of the top ring on those wall stakes. And keep in mind that Red did lose auto here, so they should be playing more aggressively. This is another mistake that I've seen just so many times already. And finally here, they do play aggressively here and take that blue goal and push it into the negative corner. But however, another thing that I've noticed a lot of teams not really keep track of it's just if they gave if they let go of control of one goal right their their opponents can very easily take control of another goal and push it into the negative corner and we're going to see that right here in our third match that we're going to watch so in the third match here this is from the lobster bowl signature this is this is finals two and here 99 percent makes an amazing play here towards the end grabbing that blue goal and stealing it but guess what when the t the time that, that they took to steal that goal, Red has also stole one of their goals. So it's never that easy to take a goal away from a very good opponent and you know have nothing happen. And also, just pay attention to the calmness of the driver on Snappy Cakes here. At the very last two seconds, still able to put down that scoop and push the goal into the corner with a light tap. Next up, we'll talk a little bit about controlling the flow of a match. So the most important part about usually a high level match is just who's in control and who has the, who has the flow. So in this match here, you can pretty 
quickly tell that blue has the flow. And I mean, the reason for that is just because, hey, they were able to steal that goal away from red pretty early on, right? That was a pretty devastating uh, play against red there. And the red team quickly realizes, and you know, they're going to be under a lot of stress there. So that's really just what controlling the flow is, right? If you went auto, right, you're starting off controlling the flow. So and if a advice I have for teams out there is that, you know, to control the flow at the start of the match is practice, 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 right? Practice the first 15 seconds, right? So at US Open, one thing that us and our alliance partner did, uh, who was Saratoga, right? Is before Elims, we would practice the first 15 seconds over and over again, right? To control the flow, control the flow, control the flow. Right, so then our first, our 15 seconds, our first 15 seconds in the match at US Open was pretty much always perfect, right? Nothing would go wrong. We would always be able to hit our full, hit our ball, right? Hit the defense, hit the ball, whatever we want to do, we, we would do it. So, right, just play, just practice with your teammates to make sure that you have the flow. And now we've talked about, right, what it is like to have the flow, right? And we'll see how a team is able to regain the flow while losing. So this is the finals in Dome last year, the world finals, right? So here, BarkBots is able to hit a pin here and this regains them the flow. So they pin Makabaka here. And what this does is is a super good way to really control the flow because you know that makes the other driver, you know, they can't move, right? They're not feeling, you know, they're, they're, they're not feeling as well with the robot, right? And that allows BarkBots really here to make a lot of plays until, until they, they get themselves stuck. but. Yeah, that's controlling the flow. So next, I'll really talk about how you should play when you're, you know, in, in down of two corners. So this is a big mistake that I've seen a lot of teams make, right? A lot of teams here are down two corners, right? And what they usually do is they either, you know, really fight for these two corners and just hope for the best, right? Hope that your opponent makes a mistake. And that's the same thing, once again, with controlling the flow, right? Because, hey, once your opponents have the flow, the only things that can really mess up that flow, right, is themselves, right? or you so by themselves i mean that if they get if they run into a wall or run into something right that messes up the driver's tempo that messes up their flow but what you can do is pin them that messes up their tempo and that can disrupt their flow so with this match here what happens is that both these blue teams are really not that not doing that much right red is able to con uh, control three goals here so this is kind of devastating for for blue but let's say that red only has control of these two goals in the corner right Let, let's say that blue has control of this one so this one would be like right here and what blue should do in this situation right they're down two positive corners right but they're up in goals right we see a lot of uh this situation happening and what happens here usually is that blue is gonna try to blue's gonna try to fill up all three of those goals with with blue rings right that's what uh the instinct right tells the the vex people tells the vex competitors to do and i think and that's what happens a lot in these matches but however i'm going to say don't do that i'm going to say take a goal right and i'm going to need the blue team right to trust me on this they're going to put a blue goal in here in the negative corner and they're going to protect it and one of the robots are going to protect it right you know protect it while the other one grabs a goal and fills it up with red rings and the reason of that is because they're going to play the same thing right they're going to do a swap once the once they have a red goal filled they're going to do a swap right here and what that's going to allow them to do is play the same defense that this guy is playing right now, but instead with a red goal in the negative corner and a blue goal on them, right? Still counting as positive points. And what that allows them to do is that this, the other blue robot with the full blue goal will now be able to play wall stakes. And guess what? Red has one, two, three, four, five, six less rings. And now red only has, you know, an available one ring maybe maybe two more right here right to do wall stakes with while blue has so many more rings to play wall stakes with right they're able to really capitalize on being down in the corners because you know red really can't leave those corners until the last 15 seconds so, that, so that's what i've concluded after watching hundreds of matches in high stakes so far